This papal encyclical, Libertas Prestantissimum by Pope Leo VIII, reflects the Catholic teaching of St. Augustine of Hippo that our liberty must correspond with reason and thus seek the path of the higher good rather than becoming a slave to evil and sin. In other words, as children of God, we must seek the moral good rather than follow the path of destruction upon acknowledging the teachings of God that guides our reasoning. Freedom is the power rooted in reason and will. Without reason, we cannot have freedom. Through our free will, we shape the course of our lives. Our freedom thus makes us responsible for our actions to the extent that indeed they are truly reasonable. True moral liberty, therefore, requires the submission to the authority of God and commanding good and forbidding evil. However, as long as our freedom has not bound itself definitely to its ultimate good, which is God, there is the possibility of it always choosing between good and evil, and thus possibly growing in perfection as we act according to the findings of our reason, and or on the other hand, possibly growing in our human failing and sinning as we act against ourselves in our reason in a way which violates ourselves which lessens our freedom or it diminishes the in some way because our freedom exists as the greatest good that belongs to us given by god from this good comes either the greatest of possible good or the worst of possible evils hence the greater the goodness of our freedom the greater will be the evil that comes from the defective exercise or from the defective performances of our freedom while other creatures such as the birds in the sky the animals in the forest and jungles and the wildlife within the deep seas follow their senses when seeking good and avoiding evil we the children of god is guided by reason to follow and do what is morally good in every aspect of our lives and avoid what is considered immoral that ushers us into becoming a slave of evil and sin Therefore, reason is the law that guides our free will into seeking the morally good and shunning from evil acts. In this reflection of reason as our guiding law, we can understand why the choice to disobey the good of law and reason and so to do evil is itself less a use of freedom and more an abuse of the freedom which in the end we would be lead toward a kind of slavery of self which would exist for us as the slavery of sin. Ideally, or when things exist in a way that they should be, the rationality of our understanding extends and moves into the rationality of our acts of human willing in a way which moves from the freedom. As rational, as intelligent, and therefore like God, as created in God's image and likeness, man is created thus with free will, having the natural liberty of his free will, and so he is the master over his acts. In other words, God created man as rational beings, conferring on him the dignity of a person who can in it initiate and control his own actions. God willed that man should be left in the hands of his own counsel so that he might of his own accord seek his creator and freely attain his full and blessed perfection by cleaving to him. No greater gift belongs to us in our human condition than this human ability to make the free decisions and choices in the actions that we do. Although it might appear that since reason regulates our liberty, our freedom is thus impaired. However, this is not actually the case, since the coexistence between our rationality and human liberty leads us to reap the rewards of our moral righteousness and restrain us from evil that would inevitably lead us into punishment. Our freedom is first given to us in our experience of the option of choice that exists for us although we soon find that good choices depend on good acts of understanding. We find that our human freedom grows or it attains its greatest goodness or its greatest perfection when it is directed towards God and the things related to God where in the end God exists as our true happiness and there exists nothing greater than God. In other words, there is no higher good than God as the origin and the end of all good things. For good reason, it has been said that the wise man alone is free. And conversely, the more that 
one does what is good, the freer one becomes as a human being. The goodness of our behavior redounds to the goodness of our understanding. And judgment as each acts to effect the good of the other. Ultimately, nothing's more foolish can be uttered or conceived than the notion that because man is free by nature, he is therefore exempt from law. No true freedom can exist other than in the service, which is most liberating for us, hence ultimately and somewhat obviously in a manner which must be obediently turned towards the good and the being of God as he exists in himself. In our world, despite the liberty gifted by God upon us as his children, we are bound together by human laws in order to harmoniously live with one another. Such human laws originate their values from the natural law and divine law respectively. As such, the transparent goal of human laws is for the good of each individual in society. The laws created by man that concerns what is good or bad is a reflection of the natural and divine laws where we, the children of God, are required to follow the path that leads us to God and lead us away from evil. Ultimately, although the laws created by man impairs their freedom, gifted by God, the compulsive force upon such laws ensure that individuals living with one another in society predominantly exercises their free will to attain the good and deters evil acts. Moreover, there are established regulations among men that selects aspects of natural law such as contribution to public peace and prosperity, cleaning the environment, and advocating the protection of wildlife. From this understanding of the relationship of freedom, that is a gift from God and human laws that originate their values from natural and divine laws respectively, we can thus presume that God is the sole standard and rule of human liberty on man, the community, and civil society. Moreover, from this understanding of the nature of human liberty, communitarian brotherhood is its purpose and thus not solely on serving individual interest. The origin of human laws on divine and natural laws is likewise evident on the power of those given by authority to manage the populace in a given state. They are not given unreasonable and capricious commands upon their subjects as it would lead to the destruction of society. Moreover, they are not also given powers that would lead that would be considered contrary to divine laws and natural laws. Otherwise, it would not just insult the laws made by men, but the natural and divine laws that the former originated their values. Moreover, as authorities are not given unreasonable amount of powers, they are not also provided with powers to enact human laws that are contrary to the rule of justice and lead men away from that good which is the very end of civil society. Thus, St. Augustine most wisely says, I think that you can see at the same time that there is nothing just and lawful in the temporal law unless what men have gathered from this is the eternal law. The authority in the state comes from the people only and that just as every man's individual reason is his only and his only rule of life, so the collective reason of the community should be the supreme guide in the management of all the public affairs. The philosophy that is contrary to divine and natural law thus is rationalism that stresses the supremacy of the human reason over the divine will of God, constitutes itself the supreme principles and source and judge of truth. Thus, as rationalism centers upon man rather than God, those that subscribe in such a philosophy have their own independent values and morality that leads them to the disobedience in the command of God with their perceived unregulated freedom. Rationalism thus leads to the disorder and disunity in society, as those that subscribe to such asserts their independence from civil society. Therefore, rationalism is dangerous in civil society, especially those that subscribe in such philosophy and manages to acquire a crucial role in the government. As rationalism centers the interest upon men, it is likely that they will rather prioritize serving their own interests rather than the rather than the common welfare or the common good of society that they have sworn to uphold. As rationalists have their own set of values different to the teachings of the Catholic Church that secretly leads to the enslavement of evil, it is likely that they are indifferent to the concept of honesty. Thus, rationalist polis political leaders are likely deceptive and manipulative in nature to attain their goals. Regarding the attainment of their goals, 
such political such politicians will likely regulate the freedom of most people in society through human laws as aforementioned earlier regulating our freedom for the benefit of society adheres to the natural and divine laws however for rationalists they might regulate the natural freedom of society that are not contrary to public order and just laws to serve their personal interests. For instance, rationalists may restrain the rights of private individuals to care for the sick or voice out their sentiments against oppression in an orderly manner that is not contrary to just laws that have been established. Rationalists, rationalists might also unjustly regulate the natural rights of men to establish associations not contrary to law and public order. Ultimately, rationalists, especially those that are radically as such, that prioritize serving their personal interests than the benefit of society, are dangerous. This is, this is my reflection on this is my reflection and vlog on the papal encyclical Libertas Prestantissimum by Pope Leo VIII. Um, that is all, everyone. Um, I hope you like this video. Thank you. And have a good day.